Hello everyone, I have some big news for you. This young boy on your screen who looked like this several years ago is now a 2700 plus grandmaster. Yes, you heard it right. Pragnananda has become the 8th player in India to cross 2700 and he did so yesterday at the Geza Hiteni Memorial in <clears throat> Budapest where he started off with a rating of 2690 and won his first two rounds against two very strong opponents Sanan Sujirov and Parham Maksudlu to gain 10.5 ELO points and cross 2700 ELO. This is uh, his scorecard here. He has two points out of two. It's a strong round robin tournament that he's playing and very likely that uh, Prague will do well here after what he did at the Global Chess League. You know, he was the player of the tournament there. He's already in sole lead with two out of two, but he has strong players to play against. Uh, Kozak Adam, Shevchenko, Tabatabai, Prohaska, uh, Peter El Elyanov, Matlakov, Wojtashek. This is a picture from there to just show you who the players are. And we hope that Prague plays really well and goes above in the rating. Uh, gaining 10 ELO points in first two games is already brilliant. Uh, here's a very nice picture that was created by uh, Himang from Chessbase India. He just showed all the players who have crossed 2700 ELO. We have first Vishy Anand, then Shashikiran, then Hari Krishna, Vidit, Adiban, Gukesh, Arjun and finally Prag who has done it. Uh, many of the people said, oh, we are surprised that Prague had not crossed 2700 because many of them thought he already has had results which sort of warrant him to be about 2700, but it finally happened here. So, uh, let's have a look at the game of Pragnananda that made him a 2700 plus player. It was against Parham Maksudlu and Parham is a very strong player. He's rated 2719. So, it was a strong challenge for Prague. He was playing with the white pieces. This was the second round of the tournament. Uh, so, let's have a look at the game. Prague opens the game with 1c4 and Parham goes e5. Knight c3, knight c6, English opening, four knights out on the board, g3 fianchetto and he plays the reverse Sicilian. Takes, takes, bishop g2, knight b6, castles, bishop e7, a3, castles and b4. This has been played several times. In fact, this was one of my favorite setups to play with the white pieces. Uh, Mihail Marin, the very famous grandmaster, had written a series of books on this line and I was very inspired by, by that. So, I used to play this. Parham, of course, knows his theory and is not scared of the fact that white can push b5 in this position. Black jumps in and you can't win this pawn because of the bishop jumping here and it is game over because the knight is coming to c2 next. White is busted. So you can't win this pawn just as yet. Prague first goes d3. Now f6, Parham defends the pawn. Knight e4 played queen d7, rook b1 in the position. Rook b8, just in case, you know, later when knight c5 is played, you take, take, the pawn does not hang. So, prophylaxis there, bishop comes to b2, a6, queen c2 played. And now, Parham starts to go a bit wrong. He goes bishop a2, forcing Prag to a, Prag's rook to a better square. In fact, even rook d1 was a good idea because here, d4 is a very powerful break for white. But okay, he goes rook c1 and now it was very important to get the bishop out. Let's say bishop d5 and position is fine. White is slightly better. But he blunders here. He goes queen e6. And here it is important to find the move that Prag played. You can try to pause the video and think what should Pragnananda do here. Important movement. So Prag finds this very nice move knight e d2. And in some ways the bishop is trapped here uh, because you can't go to b3 you can't go to c4 if you go to d5 i will simply push my pawn to a4 and force you back there when your bishop is in trouble so i think queen f7 is something that you can try 
to get your bishop back here but then i will close the path of your bishop and then eventually you may have to give up your bishop here which would lead to a completely uh, minus position because i can even push your knight away later so this was this was these were some of the problems here but i think parham had some ideas to play on the queen side he said it will take you some time to still trap my bishop before that i will create the play now prak could have gone b5 that's also a fine move which makes me feel like a5 is not the best decision because it's not like parham missed something uh, a5 i mean a5 per se is okay but the idea with bishop a2 already went in the wrong direction so prag actually found the best move b takes a5 knight a5 and now played this move bishop c3 so he's attacking the knight the knight was defended and now uh, let's say for example if you get tempted to snatch a pawn let's say if you take take and take here it's after bishop a3 black is okay you know that is a playable position also uh, just to note that here taking this pawn is not a great idea because of rook f c8 and already uh, things are not looking that great for you so bishop c3 rook a8 and now prag found a move which i would like you to find pause the video and think what to do Prak finds this very classy move, bishop h3. Very cool move. And the point is, if you take here, I will take. Uh, I'll take first on a2. Check king here. And then I'll take on a5. And then I'll take on c7. And I'm pawn up. Uh, and you are in big trouble. You know, if rook a3, I have queen b2. And if you play bishop a3, there are many ways, but rook b7 looks looks good. So bishop h3 was a great deflection queen went back but now he took took and queen takes c7 and all of a sudden you realize white is just up a pawn without much compensation bishop d8 queen goes back rook a6 and d4 prag played brilliantly now he just finished off the game perfectly he's pawn up rook a1 knight came to a4 queen c2 bishop c5 knight went back takes takes bishop a7 bishop g2 f5 e3 so once everything is solidified now this is a weakness your pawn up so rook d1 rook d5 strong move rook c6 he brought his queen to d2 and now rook b5 attacking here uh, already big trouble so in this position parham went sort of desperate played f4 Prag took the pawn, f takes e3, and after take on f7, he resigned because if you take here, then I can play rook takes a7, and I'm simply a piece up. So after rook takes f7, Parham resigned the game, and Pragnananda had beaten, and this was the game that helped him reach 2700 uh, elo. Prag is now the fifth highest junior in the world after Firuja Gukesh. Abdu Satarov, Arjun, and now Prague. And also, he becomes the sixth Indian right now to be in 2700. We already have Vishi. Number two is Gukesh. Number three is uh, Vidit. Number four is Hari. Number five is Arjun. And now Prague is already on 2700. Uh, Prague becoming a 2700 put both me and Amruta yesterday in some kind of a nostalgia mode. Because we've been following the journey of Prague from this moment. I think this was the first time we met him in 2014 when the boy was just um, nine years old. And uh, this was one of the first pictures of Prague that went viral. Um, later on, there are many pictures. I would make a separate video on it, but just to share a few today. He became the world under 18 champion in 2019 when he was just 14 years old. It was a very proud moment. Amruta made this sort of edit with the Indian flag. Uh, you know, whenever you see Prag with the chessboard, you always see him happy, sort of, you know, uh, in great mood and great spirits. I think uh, that's really uh, wonderful to see. This was um, 
a beautiful uh, game that is on our channel anand versus prague 2018 prague was just 13 years old and then in the post conference post game conference it was uh, both of them very in with very smiling faces uh, the entire family wonderful family ramesh babu nagalakshmi vaishali and this was taken in 2020 at the kramnik gelfand camp um or the entire family another very nice picture of prag uh, the his mother taking a picture before the round this is one of uh, the earliest tournaments where i i think my first interview with prag happened here at the aerofloat open uh, in 2016 when he was just 11 years old look at that happiness on his face uh with sister vaishali there Uh, this was at the World Championship in 2021 when Prague got to make the first move in the game of Carlson Nepo, and he's sitting at the board. Hopefully, someday he'll play the World Championship match. And there you have making the first move one c4 for Nepo, which actually he played in the game. A big congratulations also goes to Prague's trainer R B Ramesh. He has been absolutely instrumental in Prague's growth. This was. back in 2018 when i went to ramesh's house to commentate on world championship match and prag was there uh, prag has been like a rock solid support to both prag and vaishali uh, sorry ramesh has been a rock solid support uh, for prag and vaishali uh, and there are many many pictures this is the picture of him winning the arjuna award recently a beautiful picture of nagalakshmi uh, kissing prag the this is um him with his parents after the arjuna award at leon uh in spain prag uh, big after he became the asian champion uh, this is another very nice picture of prag and uh, i have a couple of more pictures with him my uh, one of them is this one <laughs> look at prag's ex- uh, expression there and this was one small edit made by amruta So uh, I'll make a separate video on this for sure because we have some amazing archives of Prague and his entire journey. But suffice it to say that he has made us proud on numerous occasions with his performances, right from the time he was trying to chase uh, Karyakin's record of becoming the youngest grandmaster. to becoming maybe to just making his final nom at the world juniors then be- winning the world youth recently becoming the asian champion beating magnus five times playing amazing chess at global chess league well prag congratulations and uh, hope that you reach 2800 soon for now guys this is sagar shah signing off bye bye